Shalom brothers and sisters. I have been waiting for a news headline to surface the internet um, and over the past hour uh, Times of Israel, their official verified Twitter X account posted um, an article, Biden, U.S. Egypt cater to work to ensure full implementation of any Israel-Hamas deal. Um, and in this article, I don't want to read it word for word verbatim, but um, it states very clearly that U.S. President Joe Biden um, held phone calls with Egyptian President Abdel Fattah El Sisi and Qatari Amir Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, confirming that the three countries would work to ensure the full implementation of the terms of a deal for a ceasefire in Gaza if one is reached between Israel and Hamas. Um, and so the White House says Biden told both leaders that the issue of the hostages still held by the terror group is now the only obstacle to an immediate ceasefire and relief for civilians in Gaza. Um, and so the leaders discussed the hostage deal currently being negotiated as well as efforts to increase aid to the Gaza Strip, um, according to the White House. And, um, and then today, um, according to Times of Israel, Biden at Yahoo, they spoke over the telephone talking about Hamas, um, making very clear that they have no major issues with the latest hostage deal draft. And I believe this news headline points to the fulfillment of 1 Thessalonians 5.3. Um, it has to occur in order for the anti-Messiah to come on the global scene um, and declare peace and safety. And so, you know, until November elections come to pass, uh, we are still questioning whether or not they can pull off a peace deal. You know, uh, the October 7 massacres were very horrific. I mean, they were worse than the Holocaust in many ways. And they're waiting... They want to invade Rafa, and we know that Obama is pulling the strings with Joe Biden. And Obama is definitely serving his third term until November, and then when the November elections occurs, um, we know that um, our focus will be on whoever wins the elections, whether it's Trump or whether it's Biden. If Biden wins a second term, we know that Trump, um, we know that Obama will be serving his fourth term. And so, you know, I'm still questioning, everybody knows that I'm questioning um, whether or not Trump, Biden, and Obama fulfill Daniel 11, 19 through 21. Um, you know, then he shall turn his face toward the fort of his own land, but he shall stumble and fall and not be found. Uh, I would think that that would apply to Trump because he didn't win four more years. Uh, verse 20, Then shall stand up in his estate a raiser of taxes in the glory of the kingdom, but within few days he shall be destroyed neither in anger nor in battle. I would think that that would apply to Biden. And then Obama possibly would fulfill verse 21, And in his estate shall stand up a vile person to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. But we have until November to figure out if this does apply to Trump, Biden, and Obama. And so this next article, I do believe it does point to declaring peace and safety, parting the land. Um, and so this was posted today, updated today, and more information was added to this update today, uh, the 29th. And um, yeah, apparently the Israeli delegation reportedly was invited to join Cairo talks in Egypt in parallel with Hamas team to speed up the process, a deal for 33 hostages said on the table. And Anthony Blinken is back in the region for more peace talks. Um, Joe Biden and Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu Sunday evening discussed ongoing negotiations to close a deal for the return of hostages held in Gaza since Hamas's October 7 massacre as the sides await the terror group's response to the latest proposal, reports Times of Israel. Hamas's response is expected in the next few days, um, as soon as Monday or Tuesday, with a senior official telling AFP on Sunday that the Palestinian terror group has no major issues with the latest proposal from Israel and Egypt for a Gaza truce. The atmosphere 
is positive unless there are new Israeli obstacles. Um, okay, the official, the Hamas official from the Hamas delegation led by the movement's senior leader Khalil al Ayah, um, there will be an anonymous official that will deliver the group's response to the truce proposal during a meeting with Egyptian and Qatari mediators in Cairo, either on Monday or Tuesday. Um, and as soon as I hear about how that meeting um, occurred, how it transpired, I, I will immediately report on it if they make any decisions. Um, Egypt has also invited the Israeli delegation to travel to Cairo um, in the upcoming days to speed up the process and provide the necessary clarifications, according to um, Egyptian sources um, and also Qatari-owned outlet Al Arabi Al Jadid. Um, Egypt, which along with Cater and the United States has been unsuccessfully trying to broker a new Gaza truce deal ever since a one-week halt to the fighting in November, um, sent a high-level delegation to Israel on Friday, just a few days ago, um, to talk about the latest proposal. Okay, and so during his call with Netanyahu, uh, Biden highlighted the joint statement he organized last week with the leaders of 17 other countries demanding Hamas immediately release the remaining 133 hostages um, it is holding in Gaza. Um, and um, they talked about an immediate truce and relief for civilians in the Strip. Uh, the U.S. president reiterated his ironclad commitment to Israel's security, and they also talked about the Iranian missile drone attack that occurred earlier this month. Um, okay, and so Israel is among the countries U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken will visit as he returns to the Middle East Monday on his seventh trip to the region since October 7. Um, U.S. State Department said Blinken was scheduled to visit Israel and Jordan on Wednesday. Um, and however that goes, I will report on that if anything significant or out of the ordinary takes place. Um, and so they are just basically waiting for a response from Hamas. And after the Cairo meetings are held, after they're finished, if they do come up with some kind of proposal, a ceasefire, or some kind of permanent peace plan, I will definitely um, update people with this um, information because obviously we are to watch the time clock and if they say peace and safety, um, parting the land, obviously we need to focus our attention on Joel 3 uh, too, you know, because Joel the prophet wrote about how the, the land would be parted, okay? And so it's very, very clear. Joel 3, 1 and 2 says, For behold, in those days and in that time, after the second coming, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. And so when he crashes back down to the Mount of Olives, fulfilling Zechariah 14, 4 and 5, which is the same event outlined in Revelation 19, 14, we know that the anti-Messiah, the antichrist, and the false prophet will be killed, cast into hell, and that's when the events outlined in Joel 3, 2 will take place. He will plead for his heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. And so, yeah, um, his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north, and half of it toward the south. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto a soul. Yea, ye shall flee like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. And Adonai Elohim shall come and all the saints with thee. The saints that attended the marriage supper of the Lamb celebration. And so, um, yeah, I believe that whatever happens in Cairo during the meetings, um, if they report on Times of Israel or Jerusalem Post um, that there is a permanent ceasefire, if a peace agreement comes to pass, I will definitely report on it immediately.
And so, according to Jerusalem Post, I have to include this headline as well. Um, yeah, according to Jerusalem Post, they posted on their official J Post uh, Twitter X account four hours ago. Egyptian President Abdel Fattah Al Sisi. Um, he did receive a phone call on Monday today from U.S. President Biden to discuss the latest developments of ongoing negotiations regarding a ceasefire in Gaza and the dangers of a military escalation in Rafah. And so, really, they're they're wanting to hold. Um, peace talks in Cairo, and um, it has been reported in recent hours. Um, Biden also spoke with Qatari Emir Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani to make sure that all the terms of the hostage deal on the table are implemented. Uh, the president asked the president of Egypt and the emir of Qatar to make every effort to obtain a deal for the release of the abductees held by Hamas. And, um, yeah, so if, if any type of meeting is held in the next day or two, and if they do um, receive the thumbs up from Hamas that they will agree to a permanent ceasefire if all 133 hostages are released and if this brings about peace and safety you know the forming of a palestinian state um obviously we need to look up for our redemption is drawing nigh and so i will as soon as i hear about what happens with these peace talks um i will report any response from Hamas that the U.S. is currently waiting for um, and any type of um, peace deal that is signed between Israel, Hamas, um, Cater, and um, Egyptian um, officials and the U.S. Um, because I'm thinking we're getting very, very near to when they say peace and safety. Um, that's if they sign a peace deal parting the land of Israel. And so, yeah, I hope and pray that we see our blessed hope very soon. I wish I could push the fast forward button and fast forward to the November elections because really I am questioning if Biden is going to get elected um, on another term, which if he does, it would be Obama's fourth term. Or if Trump wins, um, then our focus will be obviously on Trump, you know, but I can't carve anything in stone, really. Um, you know, Trump, Biden, and Obama, I kind of question, many of us are questioning if they fulfill verse 19 through 21 of Daniel chapter 11. So we will have to wait and see. We will definitely know if we're still here in November. Um, shalom, brothers and sisters. I pray we fly very, very soon.